My name is Mike Posner. Today we are at the Wim Hof training facility. Give it all you got. Good morning! <laughs> Give me 20. No, I gave you 100. Without breathing. The first time I heard of Wim Hof was when he was featured on Tim Ferriss' podcast. Uh, fast forward maybe five years later, a friend of mine, Lewis Howes, invited me on a retreat to Poland to train with Wim himself. And I thought, mm, I better show up to that. Pretty uh, special invitation. Yeah. I'm from Michigan. It gets cold there. We swim a lot in lakes there. You know, we have some big lakes. And when I was younger, I just noticed that I always felt good after I came out of that water. And so just on my own, I started to take cold showers because I just felt good after I felt alive. You know, I'm not a coffee drinker, but I always said, that's my coffee. Of course, then when we practice with wind, the water is much colder and in there much lo longer. Um, and yeah, I felt uh, high from it. Yes! Oh! It was really life-changing experience. Learning from him was so powerful and I took the practices with me. I certainly know what it's like to just feel uninspired and to not really be excited to get up in the morning and this kind of feeling. And when I'm in those seasons of my life and my meditation mantra feels like sand in my mouth and nothing's working, the cold and the breath, they seem to penetrate, you know, when other things don't. Well, the first time I did the Wim Hof breath work seriously with Wim and these guys in the workshop environment, the way I felt and the way I do feel when, you know, even we did the breath today and I felt it again, and it's damn powerful. It's damn powerful. It felt like I was putting a cheat code into my body or something. We used to play these old video games when I was a kid on like N64 and if you hit, you know, certain buttons in a certain order, it'd give you some special power. Well, this is kind of what it felt like. It's like, if you breathe in this certain way, you know, three times, then like, bang, you get this special power. And uh, it's like, why did I not know about that? I've been in this, been in this meat sack for 33 years now. And so it's pretty surreal. His zeal, it's, it's not even a belief, it's a knowing. And his enthusiasm is infectious. With the limited time I've spent with him, I've seen his enthusiasm supersede people's own beliefs about what they can do, what their limits are. His knowing and what they can do transfers over to them. People that just terrified of cold water and cold in general. Their hands always get cold. They're one of these people and I watch them sit in an ice bath for 10 minutes and they're, they're fine. Staying at Wim's place is, is fun. And because I met Wim before, I know that we just go with the flow and not gonna get a schedule or itinerary or anything like that. That's crazy. <laughs> Cannonball exercise. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Ass jump. <laughs> There's a whole host of characters that come here every day and all beautiful people. I recommend it to people all the time just because it feels so good. And it's a way of reclaiming your sovereignty especially if you're someone who thinks I could never do that. This water is like, looking a little uh, murky. <laughs> yeah, that's our feet. <laughs> Through the garden, yeah. we accumulate uh, the Earth's soil, and it's getting in there. 
Uh, when it comes to the cold, a lot of people have this kind of aversion to it. Then the opportunity is even greater for you. Um, not only will you feel how it feels, which is really freaking good after you get out of uh, ice bath, you know, you feel a real kind of body high for many hours after. But also you have the added benefit of breaking through this, this self-imposed limit, this story, which is, you know, I'm not one of those people where I could never do that. A belief is just a thought we think repeatedly over time. Breaking through of that belief is powerful. It builds momentum and you start to get better at doing hard things by doing hard things. And this is a power that you take, you know, to other parts of your life. When I met Wim, I was training to climb Mount Everest, which is the tallest mountain in the world. And the higher you go, it gets pretty darn cold up there. The more you expose the body to cold, uh, it acclimates. I was living in the mountains, you know, training, and I lived right by an icy river. And so after I had learned the uh, cold immersion from Wim, I'd just get in that river and I'd take really cold showers. And all of a sudden, you know, zero degrees Celsius is actually a pretty warm temperature to me after doing this for months and months. Acclimatizing. Wim Hof, at 19,000. When I was on Everest, I was a lot more comfortable. Obviously, when you get up on the mountain, you know, it gets to negative 15, negative 20. Well, I'm still in all the gear, you know. It's important to be safe, but I know that it felt warmer to me than it would have if I didn't do the cold immersion work. It's pretty hot. Are you feel good though? Yeah. Mount Everest is really high, and the higher you go, the less oxygen there is. You need to take three to five breaths to get what you would from one breath, here, and it's really intense. <laughs> In a week. I used the breath work to help myself acclimatize because my body was lacking oxygen just by being alive there. Thanks to those practices and also my team, I gotta shout them out, Dr. John, Dawa Dorje Sherpa, and Dawa Cheering Sherpa. I was able to summit Mount Everest. Get up there, Mike. Just the top of the wall, baby. Just the top of the wall. It's a nice sunrise up there and more importantly, get, we got down safely with no injuries, all our fingers and toes and uh, here, here enjoying life now. <laughs> it's not very high, but it's still scary. <laughs> to me at least, not to whim. Woo! That'll do it. Ha, ha, ha.